Good evening. It's a nice, warm evening in Honolulu, Hawaii, and I'm enjoying it. Hopefully, you cannot hear my fans. So I am Dr. Wilhelmina. I'm here to bring you topics that are relevant to wellness and maybe skincare and makeup. It's all about an education about health and growth. And I have fun doing it. So tonight we're going to talk about something that is particular to people that are employed, sometimes in situations that they are leaders. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Got to get somebody that doesn't have the skills they need to do their position effectively or to lead a team. So first, that individual, that employee could seek feedback. They can actively solicit feedback from team members, from peers, from their supervisors. You know, your supervisor is important. You need to know what you need to do to be effective in your job. And if you don't know how to do it and your supervisor doesn't know how to do it, there are still going to be some standards that your supervisor is going to want you to live up to. So you can start with a supervisor and get feedback from your peeps. Um, So you want to understand your supervisor's expectations and how you can support them better. Because ultimately, it's that supervisor that is going to have to make sure that these goals are being met, that you're, that the office is functioning in the way it should. So they can tell you some of the information you need, but not everything. So your second idea is to continue learning, have continuous learning. So go look in the area you need and enroll into that training. Like maybe it's leadership training. Maybe you've never been a supervisor of more than one person, and maybe you need to know how to lead. Um, You can attend workshops. You can read books or articles on leadership. You can learn from experience of other leaders so you can get some mentorship. I, I remember getting mentorship in one area I needed, and I've talked about it before, and it helped me to cover down on those areas that I needed to be a little better at. You know when you're when you have gaps and there are areas that you're not covering and you're not able to successfully be effective in them, you know. So you go out and seek the assistance you need. Okay. Um another one. So there's about nine of these tips. So you want to set goals for yourself. Now, first, I want to say you're not going to be able to instantly make yourself that type of leader of someone that has been around for a long time, came up through the ranks, became such a great leader that is intuitive and supportive of his staff. You're not going to be that person right away. But in order to be successful in your job, to just, you know, meet those standards, you need to 
follow these kinds of steps. So talking about setting goals, we've talked about before about SMART goals, but I'm going to rehash them really quickly. So you want your goals as you define them to be specific. You want them to be measurable. You want them to be achievable and you want them to be relevant and time bound. So those, the acronym for each of those words spell out SMART. So let's say my goal was to, um, let's say something specific, like I'm going to have a staff meeting every week on Wednesday, every week. So we'll start with, we're going to have that staff meeting on Wednesdays, which Wednesday is time bound every Wednesday time bound. Um, it's measurable because you know, it's every week. That's the measurement every week. Um, and it's definitely achievable. You can have a meeting every Wednesday. Now, you might have to miss some every now and then because you have too much going on and you have to do other things that have a higher priority, but mostly you could do that. So you've got the specific, you've got the measurable, you've got the achievable, and it's relevant. Well, it's relevant because you need to pass on the communication that you're getting to your employees. And if you call them direct reports, direct reports, you need to get it to your team. Your team needs to know information. And so on those meetings, that's when you'll pass it on. Also, you have emails and other things like that. But specifically, face-to-face -face helps them understand the meaning of what you're talking about. This helps you align your efforts and you're able to measure your progress on how you're doing with your goals. I pick staff meetings. It could be anything else, whatever your goals are. Um, understand your team. This is not easy. When you're busy and you're running around all day, people are pulling at you all kinds of ways. You're getting emails. People want products. They want things from you. It's not easy, but you have to take the time to understand your team. So you want to understand their perspective. Uh, sometimes things happen and you, you don't understand. Why is this going on? Well, you haven't talked to that person to find out. Sometimes they're not going to come to you and talk to you about it because they may not know how you're going to take it. They have to kind of get to know you. So take the time to get to know your team, know your members' strengths, their weaknesses, and their motivations. Knowing their motivations will help you in trying to, you know, motivate them to um, awards and, you know, maybe their, their, their success and them getting their tasks done. If they know that they get these certain tasks done. They're going to get an award at the end of the year. Some people are motivated by awards. Some people aren't motivated by that. Some people are motivated by time off. So they might want time off. Some people are motivated by knowing that they've pleased you as a supervisor. I know it sounds kind of crazy, like they pleased you, but, but it's important that they know that these kind of things, when you take care of your um, duties and, and they're completed and done well, you're happy about it, they're happy. There are people out there like that. Um, this will help you delegate tasks effectively and build a cohesive team. And, and having a co cohesive team is really important also. Um, being able to work closely together and um, be interactive, collaborate, and um, not having a bunch of drama going on. But but let me just say this. If something's going on and it, it's some kind of drama or something or, or issues or problems, you need to tackle them. You need to go ahead and talk about them. But pick your battles. Some little things might not matter, but most things you need to straighten them out. Okay. That was understand your team. That was number four. Number five, communicate effectively. So you want to maintain an open and transparent communications that you can talk at any time as long as you're not busy in the middle of something important. But take the time to make that time to talk to with, with your employees about whatever it is. Regularly update your team on your goals, your expectations, and changes that may impact them. So sometimes things come down from the higher ups and you have to change something or do something differently like your team or yourself really didn't want to do. But 
you have to because it's being brought to you from the powers that be and you just have to make that change whether you like it or not sometimes sometimes you can negotiate with a supervisor about it but if it's happening it's happening uh and another thing about that they need to know the way forward they need to know where the team is going, where the program is going and what they need to do to be effective in it themselves. And their part in that team, what is their role? They need to understand that. And you need to make sure that they do understand it. Um, <clears throat> adapt and be flexible. Number six, uh, be open to change and adapt your leadership style to suit different situations and individuals. Flexibility can often lead to better outcomes. So I would say when it comes to employees or direct reports, you want to make sure that you're not like, say, sometimes you have to micromanage. Nobody wants to micromanage. I know employees think, oh, I hate that micromanagers, but they probably got um, set up sometime, maybe not set up, but they probably ended up on the losing end of a situation with their supervisor because things weren't done properly. So sometimes you have to have that micromanager get involved when you don't really want to. You like to see people just do their job, <laughs> stand up and do what, what's prescribed, prescribed for them to do for their duties. But Sometimes it doesn't happen for many reasons. It could, it might not be that they're just derelict in their duties. It might be that they have some things going on at home or they don't have the capability to do what they need to do. Maybe they need to go and learn some more so that they can do that duty, whatever it is. And sometimes people don't want to speak up and say, I don't know. I need some help. You know, a lot of people don't want to do that. They don't want to, they don't want to admit that I don't know this. Yes, I'm hired to do this, but I don't know it. But it's your responsibility to get to them if you're not getting the results that you need and sit down and talk about these things. Get them to open up as best you can to tell you what's going on so you can help them. So what I was saying was adapt and be flexible. I don't went off on some tangent, but adapt and be flexible. So that person, they're having trouble, whatever. You don't want to use that same uh, leadership style with them with, I'm sorry, with someone else that is accomplishing their goals or getting it done, but you might have an issue with that person taking off on their own and doing stuff that they have not cleared with you that really needed to be cleared with you. So you need to set the tone and talk with them and tell them what is what situations require your involvement so they don't go off and do some things that you never intended for them to do. And if they do, you know, you just let them apologize and now they know not to do that. Um, so build trust. So that's the other thing. Demonstrate integrity, consistency, and rela reliability. If you're off telling your employees something and then you don't follow through on it, they don't trust. If you're not consistent on your support or your communication, they may not trust you. So uh, make sure that you are acting above board, do what you would do, even if no one's looking. Don't just try to be the star and everybody thinks you're wonderful. And then as soon as everybody turns their back, you're off doing something that's not um, appropriate or, or you're not following through on the things that you promise for your staff. Trust is the foundation of any effective leadership. They got to trust you. So build that relationship too. Um, Develop problem-solving skills. Work on improving your problem-solving and decision-making skills. This will help you tackle challenges more effectively and lead your team through difficulties. Okay, so going back to decision-making, you got to make decisions. You don't have to make them on the spot right away. You know, research it, take your time. And then make a dang decision. Don't have everybody waiting forever either for that decision because that just causes frustration and a lack of trust. Also, um, you can sit down and do a lesson on problem solving. 
there, there are many lessons out there on problem solving, and you can use those to help you with your problem solving skills. Uh, I know that I can remember as a junior leader, being afraid to make the wrong decision. So I'd sit on it for a minute. And that would cause frustration amongst my staff. So um, yeah, you want to, if you don't know about decision making, go out and do a quick class, read a quick article, do something to help you understand the whole problem solving skill set. Um, and I think I'm at number nine. These are all short and sweet. Oh, no, sorry. There's 11. Number nine, lead by example. Just like I was saying earlier about integrity. Lead in the way that you want your employees to lead. Don't do as I say, not as I do. Don't be that person because they see it. They see every little thing and they will call you out in their own way. Like, they may not tell you straight up in front of your face, whatever, but they will use examples of other people or situations that don't have anything to do with you to tell you that, you know, that wasn't right. <laughs> you, you're doing something you won't let me do. So, uh, and some will tell you straight up, but just know that you want to model the behavior and work ethic you expect from your team. Leading by example can inspire and motivate your team members. They want to be like you. And believe it or not, they're never going to say, oh, I want to grow up to be like you. No. Or they might. <laughs> but you can see in the way that they behave, they want to be like you. So if you're that person that's leading by example and you're protecting your staff and taking care of your staff and, and helping them when they need, giving them an education on things that they need. But listen, if you got a job that you weren't, skilled in or you didn't understand your responsibilities or you know you're just faking it till you make it they're gonna see that too so it's hard for you to lead by example when you don't even know what the example is so it's very important to go out and get yourself educated on leadership it's not just I'm in charge, so I'm the lead. No, there are behaviors that are specific to leaders and good leaders. And you don't always have to be charismatic, but you do need to know the skills of a good leader and stick to it. Number 10, stay organized. Prioritize tasks and manage your time effectively to keep track of responsibilities and deadlines. Nothing frustrates a staff more or even your supervisor more than you not making deadlines, not keeping track of your responsibilities. They don't know what's going on. Like what's going on with this? If it's your responsibilities, you have to take care of them. If you need help, you ask for help. You can tell your staff, Hey, I need you to do this, this, or this, because I got, I got a, a my plate full and it's just too much for me to handle for this short amount of time. You can do that, but don't do it all the time. But you can do that periodically if you need to do it. But don't always dump your work on them because they have their own duties. And if you dump it on them, then then they're having trouble tracking and keeping up with their own duties. Um, so back to that staying organized. I know, I know I'm not the only one out here like this. I am forgetful. In my older age, I've gotten really forgetful. I can remember things from the past and some things. And I can remember if you if you hurt me or you do something, I'm not going to forget that. I'm going to remember that. But as far as my job, sometimes I get forgetful and I forget, you know, dates or times. And I'm, so I have to use my calendar. I use my electronic calendar and I also have a paper calendar. And another thing I do is I have something I learned when I was in the Air Force was I have this list in the morning. It's called Today's Work Today. And I know some people in the Air Force know that we used it in the clinics. We used it all over. People would use that. Those things under Today's Work Today, I don't write that at the top every time. I just have lines where I write what I need. Sometimes I number them and sometimes I put squares by them and I check them off as I get them done. At the end of the day, then I'm like, okay, what do I have left? I might have to move it on to the next day because I might not have enough time to get it done. But this is how I keep track of my duties and make sure I am covering them all. Some things are natural, uh, like every Tuesday we have this meeting or whatever. I know I got to do that, but there are things that pop up on your calendar 
that you have forgotten about. Sometimes they're my medical appointments and things like that. So use your calendars so you can stay organized. Uh, Okay, the last one, embrace feedback and reflection. Sometimes it's hard with feedback when you're, when people are critical, but embrace it because there are areas where you can be great. So keep doing what you're doing and then these other areas, be great. Get that feedback, be, be accepting of it and take it and use it. Now, if you think it's just somebody with a bad attitude that just wants to be negative towards you, that's something else. You know what that is. But when someone's really being um, authentic and telling you something about maybe a better way you could do something. And sometimes their way might not be the way you want to do it, but at least be accepting of it and sit down with it and see if there's a way it will work for you. Um, and reflect on those things that they're telling you. Think about it. Am I that person? Did I do that? Do I need a little help in this area? Do I need to research some topics so I can try to be better at this? Do I need a class? And go out and take that class. Uh, regularly reflect on your leadership practices and be open to constructive criticism to continually improve. Now, most times you're going to get that from your supervisor. Your employees are not going to come to you and just tell you, oh, you know what? You should do this. You're not doing this good enough. Now, I'm that person. I won't say it negatively where it hurts somebody's feelings, but I will say it because it helps them. They can learn from it, especially if I have the skills that they don't have. And I'll tell them, hey, you should think about this. What do you think about this? I don't just come at them and be like, you aren't doing this good enough. You need to be doing this. We're waiting for this for this from you. No, I'm that person that will come to you and say, hey, what, hey so what do you think about this? Do you think there's anything out there you can use to make this easier? You know, <laughs> that's me. Because I'm not going to come up to somebody and just, I don't want to disappoint or hurt somebody's feelings. So that's the way I handle it. Okay, so by focusing on these areas, you can be a better leader and gradually build your skills and confidence needed to lead your team. Um, but I want to say, and talking about confidence, I want to take that word out of there. Confidence will mess you up if you don't have it. So um, if you don't have the skills you need, let me just tell you a story. Long ago, I got a driver's license. And the place I got the first driver's license, the answers were showing up with the questions. So until I took another driver's test in another state, I was always very self-conscious about my driving. I wasn't sure that I really knew how to drive. I was young, so I wasn't sure that I really knew how to drive properly. I was always afraid. And so when I was able to get a license in another state, I had to do the driving. I had to do the test. Once I did that and I passed all that, I was like, okay, I got a license. I can drive. I passed. But the original one, I didn't say anything, but it did hurt me from not saying that I was not confident. So it's the same thing when you're thinking about your skills and employment and maybe you're a leader, or even if you're not a leader, those kind of things can mess you up because you know that you may not be good at it and you want to be better, but you let, you let it get in your head and it's difficult to um, do those things because you're worried you're not going to do them well enough. Somebody's going to criticize you. You're going to have an accident if it's your driver's license, right? But that you're going to embarrass yourself or something like that. So it's better to go out and seek out that training that will help you in that position. And I'm mostly talking about leadership positions. So that's all I have for today. If you found this helpful to you, share it with someone else. Um, send the link to someone. Definitely like it. Um, so yeah, just give it to others that need it and just say, Oh, I heard a good podcast the other day. It's helpful. I liked it for myself. Maybe you should listen to it and then send it to them. That will help. It's not like pointing the finger and say, you need this training. No, just have them listen and say, did you, did you hear anything that was helpful? Come back to it. Have that conversation with that person. So they really know you were trying to help and not pointing the finger. All right. 
I'm Dr. Wilhelmina. Come back for the next podcast or you can even, because I'm sure no one has listened to every single podcast that I have. So go through the list, check them out. Have a beautiful night. Take care.